Welcome back to the War Cry with Drew and Noah. So last week, our Braves absolutely destroyed the Temple Tigers and are beginning to set a new pace for this season. The Braves' defense held the Tigers to just 168 total yards, with half of those coming versus the JV defense in the fourth quarter. The Braves led 41-6 before the Tigers found the end zone versus the young guys with just seconds to play in the game. Leroy Marsh completed four of his eight passes in the game for 142 yards and two touchdowns. In addition to the long scoring pass to Boyd, Marsh connected with Ashen Bonner from 52 yards to extend the Braves' lead to 27-6 and midway through the third quarter. Senior Keyshawn Johnson scored two touchdowns on short yardage plays in the first half. Next we have the weather, meme review, a conspiracy theory, and the weather. Before that, we had some questions for a few coaches about who they were aiming for during the dodgeball tournament this past Thursday. Presley? Just wing it. So I'm here with Coach Bradland to talk about dodgeball Thursday. So what are you looking most forward to during dodgeball? Uh, winning. <laughs> it's all about winning at the end of the day. I mean, you got a staff full of collegiate athletes. Um, it's almost unfair uh, when we play. Uh, students, but you know they hop out there and we we mow them down. You know we're the lawnmower, they're the grass, <laughs> if you will. What student are you looking most forward to hitting? <laughs> uh, Troy Owens because he, he he thinks he's you know elite uh, athlete and and you know what he's not. <laughs> not when it comes to dodgeball. He may be great on the football field. He may be great on the baseball field. Um, you know all these kind of accolades that he has, but but at the end of the day, he he's not a dodgeball player. So. <laughs> so make sure to come to Dodgeball Thursday. Back to you guys. So I'm here with Shell Knight and we're going to ask him about Dodgeball. So what student are you looking forward to hitting the most? It doesn't matter really who it is, but you can see that we're super scared of any team that some students put together. <laughs> but if I had to name one, it would probably be Dale Thornhill. <laughs> Dale's got one of those faces that you just can't stand to look at at times. You don't know why you don't like Dale Thornhill, and you don't know why he needs to get hit in the face with a ball. But if there's a ball in my hand, it's going to hit Dale Thornhill's face. So that was the volleyball or whatever. Back to you guys. So I'm here with Coach Bianco about um, dodgeball Thursday. So Coach Bianco, what student are you looking forward to hitting the most? I wouldn't say it's just one. It's a, uh, it's a lot of different ones. Um, having coached them in baseball, I already know what they bring to the table, um, which isn't a lot. Um, so Dale Thornhill, Caden Rains, Trey Owens, um, they're all going to get absolutely crushed in the face. And if I had, I mean, I don't necessarily look forward to hitting one person more than the next. Um, or if it comes from me or it comes from Coach Brown or Coach Sheldon or really any of the coaches, um, they're all going to get drilled in the face. It's going to be great. So that, back to you guys. So I'm here with Dale and Caden and we're going to ask them about dodgeball Thursday. So what teacher are you looking forward to hitting the most? For me, it's Coach Brown because <laughs> he's just, he's all talk. That's all he is. <laughs> and what about you? Uh, for me, it's Coach Bianco. He thinks he's better than me for some reason, and I, I don't see it. He talks a big game, and I'm just going to have to shut him up. We don't take it. <laughs> so what students are y'all looking forward to hitting the mask? All of them. <laughs> Every single one of them. All of them, yeah. We're going to dominate the if tournament. I'm, if, if I can see them, they're getting it. Yeah, we're dominating okay. the tournament, no doubt. Yeah. All right, now back to you guys. Welcome back to your least favorite segment of the War Cry, Meme Review. It's me, your favorite lonely boy. And I'm the other guy. That no one knows about. Everyone knows me. No. But anyway, if he'll shut up, here's a meme that every single one of you knows and has seen at some point. The meme of Squibber getting run over by a boulder. Way back in the day in 1999, before any of you existed, there was an episode of Spongebob called Pizza Delivery where Spongebob and Squibber had to deliver a pizza, obviously enough. At one point, Squibber gets bulldozed by Spongebob's boulder and it became a meme 20 years later. There's not really much you can do with a meme that's new since it's just a reskin of the same concept, but since it's Spongebob, it automatically gets 8 out of 10. Well, now my meme, which is far superior to his uh, taste in internet funnies, is it being rude. Is Chinese censorship. I give it a 
10 out of 10. Nice. Nice. Welcome to Spooky Facts, because this segment is clearly not theoretical in any way. A piece of horror history entombed within one name, Dracula. One of the most famous characters in horror fiction, Dracula is just the most famous vampire in existence, with many different portrayals of the character that all originate from one famous novel by the same name, Dracula, by Bram Stoker. The character is based off of Vlad the Impaler, a conqueror of sorts, a cruel and famous medieval ruler, and famous for his habit of impaling enemies upon spikes and displaying them for all to see, even while eating dinner. Bram based Dracula's name off of Vlad's last name of Dracul, which, within the modern Romanian language, Romanian language refers to the devil. This was likely done to associate the character with the devil, and Bram took Vlad's famous last name and made it into the character known as Dracula today. This is, however, the only real connection the vampire and the man himself have. While Dracula's castle is known to be located in Transylvania, Vlad himself did not own anything within Transylvania. Yet his penchant for impaling his enemies would definitely indicate that Vlad was indeed an inhuman monster. Like Dracula, maybe he was a vampire. Whether or not Vlad was man or monster, his life story surely helped Bram in creating one of the most iconic monsters in horror history. That's all I have for this week. Halloween's closing in, and things that go up in the night will soon follow. Hello, Erd County. It's your local weatherman, Jacob Cash, here with the weather for this week. Now, as you can see behind me, this week is going to be all showers, save for Wednesday, which is going to be sunny. Uh, now, because of that cold front we're getting, highs for this week are going to be in the low to mid-70s, with lows being in the high to mid-50s range. Uh, we're going to be getting some of that nice, nice, nice cold, stormy weather that we've been waiting for all year. No more summer in County. Uh, now, that's all for this week. Thank you for watching. Next Friday, Varsity Football plays Callaway at 7.30. It's going to be a battle, so come out and support your Braves. Varsity Softball will be going to Columbus for the Elite Eight. They have a shot at winning another title, so let them hear your support. Before we go, we've got some football highlights, the best moments of last week's Hoko Mummy Race, and a new segment we like to call Baseball Quotes with Dale and Drew. Hope you all enjoy.
right, here we are with uh, homecoming highlights recap uh, that we're going to be doing here with Dale, Drew, and Noah. Uh, let's go ahead and get this started. So, looks like the mummy race has begun, and they're starting to get wrapped up right now. Looks like Isaiah O'Neill off to a slow start, you know. Um, there Coach, Coach Shunnett takes off for the faculty. And a half his toilet paper is hanging off Coach Shunnett, typical cheater, you know. They're about to start wrapping Jasmine Spradlin. Looks oh, like Bailey Scarborough is already juniors. made to the other side. Bailey Scarborough taking off for the juniors. Oh, freshman in third place going. Man, freshman. Pick it up. Bailey Scarborough wrapping up Sophia Long right now as, as she's getting prepared to take off. Then it's like the sophomores in last place. Sophomores slow. Slow yeah. start. There, then there's then there's Sophia Long taking off for the juniors. The juniors are gonna win it. Win it by a long shot. Faculty fell apart, man. And the junior crowd is hype right now. There is a big rally here against uh, the juniors and seniors. We'll see how that turns out after this win for the juniors. Well, Dale, I think the juniors there um, might, might beat y'all pretty bad this year. So. There goes Lindsey Stewart hopping backwards, hopping to the end. I don't know if I'd count that as um, it's fair. And Zeke Boy, man, getting wrapped up tight. Half her toilet paper. Now, I would like off. to say the freshmen did not finish their toilet paper rolling. There are no. still few left. Morgan K just just putting her toilet paper in her arms, carrying her toilet paper and Dude, she has starts off losses. starts off with a good hop, but then just turns into a skip. <laughs> Junior crowd cheering on that the seniors suck. The seniors replying back that the juniors suck. And there we go. That's the end of our highlights. Hey, Hare County. Since the baseball season is right around the corner. We're going to open up with a new segment we like to call Baseball Quotes with Dale and Drew. Dale, what's the quote of the week? There are three things you can do in baseball. You can win, you can lose, or it could rain. And remember, there's no crying in baseball. That's all for this week, Brave Nation. Tune in next Monday for all your weekly news and reminders. And remember, with pride, go Braves.